Beloved you are about to listen to year 2023 airs conference. Through the scriptures, you will receive revelation light on what it takes to manifest as a heir of God and joint heir with Christ. Now, listen to the full teaching by Chim D. Ohani. Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Alpha and Omega. And Omega, you are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. Ah, Yahweh, we worship you. Our Abba Father, we glorify you. Adonai, we celebrate your majesty. To you be all the praise and glory forever. To you be all the honor and thanksgiving. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Adonai, we celebrate your majesty. We magnify you. We say, hallowed be your name forever. Be thou exalted. Be thou glorified. Be thou lifted up, Lord. To you be all the praise and glory. We celebrate your majesty. We celebrate your majesty. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we praise you. Hallelujah to your name. 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 Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Blessed be your name forever. 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 Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we exalt and extol you. Be glorified, Lord. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, great I am. We celebrate you, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you. Be exalted forever. Be glorified forever, Lord. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' precious name we have worshipped. Abba Father, we bless and appreciate you. We give you the thanks and glory. We celebrate you for your grace and your mercy towards us. We thank you for another privilege to share fellowship in your presence. We thank you for the third night of Hess Conference 2023. Yes, to Jesus alone be all the praise and glory. Thank you for what you have taught us from the first morning to this to um, this morning. We bless you, Lord. Yes, we Lord. give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. Sweet Holy Spirit, you are the teacher of the world. Teach us the world tonight. Amen. Grant us understanding that we may live Amen. to your glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. amen. All right, we bless God for what he has been doing in his conference 2023. It's been awesome. It's been a glory to glory ride. And we bless the name of the Lord forever. God has been revealing great things to us and we appreciate him for that. You know, we've been taken off from where we stopped um, last year. And um, what a great privilege to hear great and mighty um, revelation from God's word. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. We've been understanding that as heirs of God, um, persecution is the man is our manifestation. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, um, the Bible speaking um, about um, um, the, the, the early apostles, how they were queried not to preach in the name of Jesus. And they replied and said, will we obey you? to not preach in the name of Jesus or would we obey the Lord? We definitely obey the Lord. And they beat them and they went back and they told the church. And the church, rather than cry or complain or murmur, they prayed that the Lord will give the apostles boldness 
to preach the word. Amen to Jesus. I believe that um, over the years we have um, had a missing link, a a missing connectivity between us and the first church. And um, the Lord is bringing back that connectivity. Praise God forevermore. They didn't have what we have today. They didn't have the gadgets we have. They didn't have the platforms we have. They didn't have the opportunities we have. Amen. But their impacts were glaring. Praise God forevermore. And the Bible says the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Amen. And if that's meant to be, that is the reason why God has allowed the church to have all the opportunities she has today. The internet is there. Um, the finances are there. You know, many provisions are made available. Denominations are there. Many um, preachers of the gospel are there. So much is availed to the church. And the reason why God has availed us all this is because he wants to see our man. He wants us to manifest. Praise God forevermore. And we have understood that persecution is a manifestation of hairs of God. Praise God forevermore. We thank God for the miracles. We thank God for the signs and wonders. But if you go through Bible history, you discover that when the church was persecuted, they manifested. Every time the persecution was at its peak, the manifestation was at its peak. And so it's important that we embrace persecution. It's important that we open up to persecution. It's important that we, 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 we align with persecution. Praise God forevermore. We have over the years learned to run away from persecution and it has affected the church greatly. That is why the seeker sensitivity is on the increase and the baby friendly Christianity is on the rise and the um, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me um, um, uh, ideology of Christianity has been on the rise. Praise God forevermore. And we are not we are not having Christians who are manifesting because um, over the years we have drifted and um, I believe the Lord is calling the church back to the right place. Amen to Jesus. And we have to manifest. We must manifest. Amen to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. And so, Hell's Conference since last year has been on this line. It has been following this trajectory. It has been following this direction. The focus has been straight. Amen to Jesus. And um, it's basically not what the everyday believer will want to hear, but this is what we have to hear. Amen to Jesus. Um, you know the end time um, operation is the itchy ear where people will not want to want to hear what is suiting into their ear. But we have not been called to preach what is suiting to the ears of many. We have been called to preach the gospel. Amen. And despite the fact that the gospel is good news, people, Christians are still selected to the way they accept the good news. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Just the same way the birth of a male child will be good news to one family, the birth of a male child may not be good news to another family. And because a family that is looking for a female child, when you say you've gotten a male child again, it becomes a challenge. In fact, let's even look at it from the African setting. The birth of a female child will be good news to a family, but will not be good news to many families in the African setting because they want the male, the male, the male. But it's still good news. Are you get what I'm saying? And that's the same way. This revelation is good news. You cannot fault it is good news. But to some, it may not be good news because it's not suiting to their ears. Amen to Jesus. But please and please, heirs of God, we need to accept this truth. We need to accept it. The earlier we do, the better for us. Amen to Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. We are going to be looking. um, We discovered that um, to persecute means... To, um, to be pressed. We looked at being pressed yesterday. We looked detailed at least a little into it and I believe that study would help us a lot. Amen to Jesus. And we're going to, and another word for it, well, it's also to suffer. To suffer. Amen. To suffer. And um, a third word for it is um, to be, to, to, to flee. To flee. The third um, 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 definition for persecute is to flee. We are going to be. We have looked at um, press to be pressed yesterday, and we'll just look at it a little more, and then we'll also add um, to suffer. Praise God forevermore. We know the sufferings of our Lord Jesus. We cannot overemphasize them. From Gethsemane, where he sweated um, blood. We have done, uh, uh, um, in many of our teachings, I've talked about that over and again. I will never get tired of talking about his sweating of blood, his hemorrhaging, where his epidemics, the whole, the the sweat pour there became bigger than normal for a thick blood to come through. And science makes us understand that the reason that happened was because of the pressure that was on his mind and on his heart. And no human being has been able to carry that kind of pressure. Only Jesus carried it, the perfect man, only the God man carried it, praise God forevermore. 
and only he would ever carry it amen to jesus yeah. and he, he prayed for three hours just one prayer point and he told the disciples my heart is exceedingly heavy and they could not understand why his heart to be heavy because for three and a half years his heart has been merry <laughs> so why would his heart become heavy at this point in time praise god forevermore but that 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 pressure on his heart was what began from gethsemane entered into when he was being he was being um um um, um, um uh, sifted praise god forevermore hallelujah we learned it yesterday uh you know why he was being sifted praise god they beat they, they blindfolded him and they began to beat him and beat him and ask him, tell us who beats you. Praise God forevermore. At that point in time, that was a a, a, a time, if many of us are there, we we'll say, if we're to be in a situation, we we'll say, my father, prophetic anointing, prophetic anointing, prophetic anointing. And then we we'll say, it is, it is, it is Ananias that beat me now. Hey, man of God is prophesying. Yes, yes, yes. It is, um, it is um, Jonah that beat me now. Jonah, Jonah, you're the one who beat me now. Jonah, uh, you are wearing a, a, a brown gown, and um, you are, your club was um, cut out of mahogany, and would have been loved to ha have all those kind of, you know, um, um, ex uh, prophetic, barometric, you know, um, displays. But Jesus did not see that as a time for that. And that's why you see the church over the years, we've not even known the right time to do the right thing. And we need to understand something also, that Jesus was blindfolded and beaten, praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. And But the beautiful thing about it was that his eyes were not plucked off. Amen to Jesus. Samson's eyes were plucked off. And he was made to do many jobs. Amen to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. And that was because Samson missed it. He missed it. And that's why his eyes were plucked off. Praise God forevermore. But remember something that Samson's eyes could not be restored because throughout the Old Testament, no blind eyes were open because Jesus didn't open blind eyes as a prophetic inclination, a prophetic um, pointer to the fact that he came to open the blind eyes of the whole of humanity. A people that dwelt in darkness have seen a great light. And to them in the valley of the shadow of death, light is what brought forth praise god forevermore hallelujah, hallelujah to you. so when samson lost his eyes he lost his outer vision forever praise god forevermore because he lost track of purpose but jesus was blindfolded with a scarf why because he was on purpose amen to jesus and then the scarf was still removed praise god forevermore hallelujah to jesus and so we need to understand that every of that down to when he was flogged he was scourged every of the passions were part of what his pains that he went through, the sufferings he went through as a suffering servant. And he suffered every of that for our redemption. We have to suffer persecution for our what? Our, for the reconciliation of many. And the Bible says, um, uh, uh, the Bible says, you have not had to resist unto, resist sin unto the, sh the shedding of your blood. He says, you have not had to do that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God forevermore. Uh, 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 and we don't understand what that means. A amen to Jesus. But that it was just a, uh, an explanation of what Jesus did. He, he said, he, he, it was, he, he, he shed his own blood to condemn sin. Amen to Jesus. To condemn sin. He caused him his blood to condemn sin. That's why it will never cause us our blood for sin again. Sin has been done for forever. And so what we just need to do is to what? Is to allow to be persecuted for reconciliation of many. Amen. The persecution, some will go in as martyrs, while some may not go in as martyrs. Praise God forevermore. Some will go in, some will not go in as martyrs. Praise God forevermore. But whatever the case may be, there's a reward for martyrs. And there's a reward for those of us who are not martyrs, but the suffering we are suffering is on the high side. How you get what I'm saying? Praise God forevermore. We all have our rewards. And I believe that Christians, heads of God, should be more reward conscious than award conscious. Because I think that there's a new tool in the Christian faith now, which is the award consciousness. And the award consciousness is when you need a reward from an earthly source. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. It is an award consciousness. So I do something and I'm giving a, re I'm, I'm, I'm rewarded for it by an earthly source. It's an award consciousness. But we must be reward consciousness. We must be reward conscious. Praise God forevermore. Reward. Yes, God can still give you earthly rewards i get what i'm saying but you do not know how it comes he brings it amen to jesus all right so today we have seen the the, the, the pressures of jesus the pain of jesus let's just quickly look at you know some of the the, the, the some more into the pressings of paul i get what i'm saying we saw that he went through so much he lost everything he lost it all for the gospel and he went through a whole great 
um, ordeal that he was even at the point in time ready to lose his life because of it all but let's look at it and you see understand what he went through because some people say yes jesus is god so he could do it because he's god yeah but you see we are but men no we cannot carry those kind of pressure okay if you say jesus is god and man 100 percent god 100 percent man and he did it because he's 100 percent god 100 percent man and you have forgotten that when you became born again you became like jesus and he became as he is all right if in case you have forgotten that let's use a closer analogy for us Apostle Paul. Amen to Jesus. It will help us come to light with many things. And I think, um, if, 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 you, if you look at um, the verse of scripture we have been, uh, we, we, we looked at, amen to Jesus. If you look at that verse of scripture we looked at yesterday, which was a major emphasis, amen. Um, and let's go back to it. Um, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, verse 5 and 8. It says, for as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. Say, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. So we see what happened to them there. Pressed out of measure, above strength, that they were ready to what? To die. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, so, if you look at the King James, it says, pressed. Pressed. Is that not so? Pressed. Amen. But the coin Greek actually says, weighed. I get what I'm saying. So King James says pressed out of measure, but the, the coin Greek says we're weighed. We're weighed. Weighed. You know? And weight is from the Greek word ebaretemen. Ebaretemen. And it means to weigh down. To weigh down. To burden. To charge. It means heavy. And it means press. So when it says we're pressed out of measure, it doesn't give us the full weight of that, what they went through. Because to be pressed is just one word that explains weight. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. It's just one word that explains what? Weight. So it's just, to be pressed, it's just a, sli- a, a, a little way to explain what they went through. It was beyond being pressed. I get what I'm saying. It was beyond being pressed. They were weighed down. They were burdened because of a heavy load being carried away together. So they were weighed down because of the the, the problems they were going through. Are you getting what I'm saying? And they were burdened because of the heavy loads they were carrying. This problem became heavy load in their mind and in their heart. Takes us back to the passion of Jesus in Gethsemane. The burden of the whole world was so heavy on his mind and in his heart that what happened? That his epidemics, the sweat point in his epidemics, tore open and blood began to come out. So when Paul says we're pressed, it means the, the, the burden was weighty on us. I get what I'm saying. The challenges became heavy burden on us. You know, it's, it's sometimes when you say, cast your cares upon Jesus for he cares for you. You know, that is the scripture. It says we should cast our cares on Jesus for he cared for us. You know, but there comes a time when it looks like you don't even know how to cast the care. Because the more you try to cast the care, the more it looks like the care is getting more weighty on you. Are you get what I'm saying? This was the kind of situation that they faced. The problems they were going through were heavy weights in their hearts. You cannot remove your eyes from it. You know, when you say, don't worry, just remove your eyes from it. Try to try to ignore it. Try to forget about it. But you know, you are trying to forget about it. <laughs> you are trying to ignore it, but it's standing glaring in front of you. Are you get what I'm saying? And that's what we're talking about here. Paul was dealing with. And his teammates, this is what they were dealing with. Are we together? This is what they were actually dealing with. And it was a heavy weight in their mind and in their heart. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, this verse helps, it, it, it intensifies the action of Paul being pressed. You see, if we just see pressed alone, it doesn't bring, you know, clarity to the whole situation. But when you see the word weight 
and then you look at the greek word for weight it helps you in it, it this verse helps us intensify the level the extent to which paul was under pressure and this is paul we're talking about here this is paul we're talking about paul that he's he's he has he, he knows how to live free of all his cares oh this is paul that a viper rolled over his hand and beat him and he shook the viper away if if there's anybody that if there's anything that should have that should have burdened anybody it should have been a viper of that kind and it is said that when it bites a person the person begins to swell and in the shortest space of time the person dies i get what i'm saying that was a dangerous um, snake that beat him and they would that, that what other pressure would have been worse than that and Paul shook it off and continued life. He didn't even pray. He didn't even say a prayer. Are you get what I'm saying? He didn't even say a prayer for the matter. That's Paul we're talking about, sir. And when the prayer looked at they say, yes, no wonder he's been, he's been, he's been um, um, captured. He's an evil man. And the, the, the wickedness he has done has caught up with him. So that's why this viper beat him. He will die now. You see, the one that soldier could not do to him, viper will do it for him. Nemesis is catching up with him. And when they watched him for the n- number of time that he, the, he was supposed to have swollen and died, and they saw that he was enjoying himself warming in the fire, they said, my God, a God has arrived amongst us. Oh yeah, bring um, oblation. Let us start worshipping. We have been seeing wrong God since now we have seen the correct God. Are you get what I'm saying? That's Paul we are talking about, sir. That's the Paul we are talking about. Are we together? The same Paul that was preaching and a man fell from up and landed on the floor and died. And there should have been a, a, a pandemonium and a chaos. And the same Paul came, uh, came down from the podium, prayed for the man, the man came back to life and continued preaching. That's the Paul we're talking about, sir. We're not talking about an, you know, um, everyday random Christian. We're talking about this Paul with Holy Ghost fire. This Paul that does not care about anything. Nothing take, gets his attention. The only thing that gets his attention is Jesus. He said, let me not know anything other than Christ what crucified. That's the Paul we're talking about here, sir. He was free of all his cares and all of his worries. That's the Paul we're talking about. Yet, this Paul says that they were weed. Hmm. Hmm. I'm telling you, there are challenges that may not make any sense to you. The viper was a big challenge. It was a, it was a life and death situation. Are you get what I'm saying? It should, have, it should have made a lot of sense to him, but it didn't make sense to him. The man that died that he prayed for, it didn't make sense to him. But there comes a time in your walk with God and in your life where there are some kind of challenges. There are some kind of persecution that will weigh you. They will weigh you. And you know the funny thing? Some of the time, some of those persecutions are not persecutions that are even expected to weigh you. You may be surprised. People will not expect such persecution to be because for them, you have gone through bigger things. You have gone through heavier things. Paul, Paul, a, don't forget that a viper beat you and you just threw it away into the fire and nothing. Don't forget that you raised a dead man. Who, those are the things that supposed to have gotten you way down. But Paul, those things, they are major things and they didn't weigh you down. How come all these other things are weigh you down? Yes, that is what we're talking about. That some of the times, the persecutions that weigh us are not the ones that people expect to weigh us. Are we together? The persecutions that weigh us down are not the ones that people expect to weigh us down. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And so, that makes us understand that this was a heavy burden in his heart. He was carrying a heavy load. Now, the Bible he even told the, 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 the church in Corinth that thank God for their prayers. Are you get what I'm saying? It means that he got to a point where he prayed and his prayer alone could not help the situation. Thank God for the prayer of the brethren. Are we together? See, we need to understand this truth about persecution. You see, the reason why most of the times we have made superstars out of our men of God, and even when they are beginning to lose ground, they don't know, we don't know, is because we think that they are the only ones meant to pray for us. We don't know that we are also meant to pray for them. But the Paul said, thank you for your prayers. You see, that's why I've been saying something. Are we sure we are reading the Bible? Are we sure? This church we have today, where did we get it from? And the Paul, we said, thank you. He said, thank you for your prayers. For your prayers abounded much for us. But we have a generation of Christians that the only the man of God prays for the people. The people do not pray for the man of God. Where did we get this, this upside down, messed up mentality from? The persecution at the top is hardest. I know the funny thing is the least expected persecution that weighs this, the, men, the, the great men down more than the expected ones. I get what I'm saying. David had killed Goliath, he had fought many battles. 
And here he was in one of the battles. And one of the brothers of Goliath, one of the giants, was fighting David and almost killed David because the Bible says that David's hand was weak at that point. And one of his soldiers came and defended him and killed that giant. And they gave a warning that David should never follow them to battle again. Let the light of Israel be put out. But I know David disobeyed that, that, that warning. I can say, what am I trying to say? That this is a man that killed Goliath at 17. Is that not so? And I've been killed and I've been fighting and winning battles for years. But there came a point where he says his hand was weak at that point. That what as a king, you must charge your army to war. That is a king responsibility. But how come he charged him to war and he was fighting and his hand became weak? We don't know the stress he has been through. We don't know what we don't know what he's even thinking of why he's fighting. We don't know what is on his mind, why he's fighting. And his hands were weak. See, the reason why we see some of our soldiers, our great soldiers, fall is because we say, ah, ah, how can you just say a small girl fell him? A small girl. Small girl. Ah, but that man has overcome bigger temptation. Why would he just be a small girl? You are the one calling it a small girl. Because the same Paul was the one who threw away Viper. Viper did not kill him. But this matter has begun to weigh him. When persecution shows up, is the least expected one that weigh us down. <laughs> the least expected ones that weigh us down. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that's why we need the prayer of brethren. Paul had to depend on the prayer of brethren at this point in time. His prayer was not enough. He had to depend on the prayer of brethren at this point in time. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. amen. So he was, he was weighed down. It, he was carrying a heavy burden. You know, sometimes when you see what weighs some people down, you be saying, when they tell you what's weighing them down, you'll be like, are you sure? You mean this, no, this, this, this trivial matter is weighing you down? To you, it's trivial. But you don't know the state of his mind that time. You don't know his emotional status that time. That that seemingly trivial matter is weighing him down. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you look at him and say, this one is a great man. This one is, uh -uh, is, uh, is big. So why should this trivial issue weigh him down? But don't get messed up here. Don't get messed up here. That seemingly trivial issue is a heavy weight on him because that persecution at that point in time might be coming when he's not at his, at his emotional strength. It may be coming when he's not at his psychological strength. It may be coming when his hands are weak, just like David in the battle. Are we together? And that's why we need the sense to pray for each other. Are we together? Because our manifestation is in persecution. So if we don't pray for ourselves when we are being persecuted, how would we manifest? And the most trivial persecutions weigh us down the most. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. It's really big ones may not weigh us down. But the trivial ones weigh us down the most. Because in combat, the enemy, you, the opponent you underestimate will make a mess of you. Are you get what I'm saying? Praise God. So he was pressed. And that is why we have to ensure that consistent prayer is made and made for the saints. Because we are supposed to be preparing for persecution. Are you get what I'm saying? And so since we are preparing for persecution, we have to raise prayers continuously for ourselves. Praise God forevermore. And the Bible says, they were, it says they were pressed out of measure. Now, out of measure is a noun, meaning that which is thrown beyond. It went beyond. Are you getting what I'm saying? It went beyond, it went beyond these boundaries. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. It went beyond the expected distance. It went out of sight. Are we together? In fact, let's say it went out of bounds. It went beyond this boundary. When persecution goes beyond this boundary, then it cannot be managed. Are you getting what I'm saying? Can never, it cannot be managed. And that's why we need the prayers of sense. Because the, the, when the persecution goes beyond its bounds, that is to show that our manifestation will go beyond its bounds. So that is why we need the prayer of sense. So such persecution, when they come, we can manifest beyond our bounds. Glory to Jesus forevermore. 
Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, and it says above strength. Is that not so? The King James Version renders above strength. Why the coin Greek renders beyond power? Beyond power. Beyond power. My God. Are we together? And beyond power is two words in the Greek. Beyond is hyper. <laughs> and power is dunamis. So beyond power is hyper dunamis. You know, when we use the word hyper, when you use the word hyper in English, it means something that is far. Is far. Are you getting what I'm saying? Above strength. Above, that's what I didn't get. Above strength. You know, above, sorry, is hyper. And strength is what? Dunamis. So when you talk about hyper strength, above strength, he's talking about hyper dunamis. And when we use the word hyper in English, you know, English gets its root from um, 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 Latin and Greek, just French, but jo join many things together and you get English. <laughs> Amen. All right. When you talk about hyper dunamis, hyper strength, hyper means extreme. So when they said when this when they said this thing was above our strength, it must it means it was hyper. Hyper power beyond <laughs> oh God. beyond beyond our power. Hyper dynamics. Praise God forevermore. This implies that it was beyond all human capacity. It was beyond all human ability. And it was beyond all human power to cope. That means well, you see, Jesus sweated blood because it was what the pressure he carried was hyper dynamics i get what i'm saying and paul comes here and says the pressure we went through also was what hyper dynamics beyond the human capacity to cope when some people cannot cope with a pressure again their mental fuse blows and they run mad is that not so they just they just run mad that's what brings about um, insanity for some people is hyper dynamics <laughs> it has gone beyond their power. And since they cannot manage it, they rob. So that means Paul should have run mad. Ashataka. There are persecutions that come your way that the devil intends to run you mad. I remember when we were going through what we were going through the persecution in the last missions field. The, the enemies scared, he planned everything to give us what? Hyper dynamics. So the thing that a pastor told, told me once, he said, what is the matter? I was talking to him, I said, what's the matter? What are these young couple did? Huh? What that they are suffering like this? People were like, why are you suffering so much? What, what? The suffering was so much. The suffering was so much. So, so much. You know, I was talking to somebody on Monday, and the person was like, I said, there this ones, they are child's play. They are play, play. I said, I've seen their eldest. Eldest bride is even an understatement. I've seen their father. They are great, great, great grandfather. They are hyper father. So they are, they are children. They are playing. And as I said, that is what still happened. I get what I'm saying. Hyper dynamic situations. It has gone beyond your power. So it meant that if not for God, Paul would have run mad because of persecution. Got to a point. My wife told me we have to maintain our psychological strength so that we can pull through this this challenge and enjoy the break the, the benefits of the break of the challenge at the end of the day so we kept we guided our mind we'll, go, we'll, go, we'll pray for six hours daily i wake up in the early hours of the morning i'll pray and we'll, oh my god we'll listen to watch teachings on television watch and watch we're just guiding our mind they said that when my mother-in-law came she looked to my wife and said ah you are too strong some people wonder why we are the way we are ah are you punoma Somebody said, ah, your ministry, your ministry is not normal, though. It's not normal. And it's, not, it's not today that the ministry became abnormal. <laughs> well, we're doing some abnormal things. Ah, hyper dynamic situations. But we came out. We've been, when we saw the ones we went through here, yeah, yeah, child, child's play, child's play, Riaz, you passed him babies. Your, your, your great, 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 great grandfather, we have dealt with him, so what's your, what's your own? Are we together? So we come to this point in persecution. But the purpose for such is because your manifestation is hyper manifestation. Are we together? 
Praise God forevermore. Amen to Jesus. So Paul was describing a what? A hopelessly difficult situation. A hopelessly what? Difficult situation. That's what Paul was describing here. That some of us have not entered challenge now. We've not entered problems. Some of us have not seen persecution. We have not seen. We have not seen. Some of us said the persecution we have seen is just, is just three months. We're talking about two and a half years. Two and a half years. My father told me, come back. And I said, okay, no problem. Send me flight ticket. <laughs> when I asked him to send me the flight ticket, he told me it's only a challenge. <laughs> I said, you have left me to my way. This guy is not normal. He's, he's, he's abnormal. And it, it, is, it is the victories that we have seen that have made us abnormal. Sorry, eh? bear with us. But I've seen too many victories that we cannot be normal again. Amen. The Lord has granted us. Are you called David a normal human being? We thought the victories. Are you get what I'm saying? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. So when we come into hopelessly difficult situation, where, where it looks like, man, there is no way I shall I know what I'm talking about. Hey, I know what I'm talking about. I remember, so was you know, was you know um, um, two weeks ago, when the children that were rehearsing, when our God had, had dealt with their great, great, great grandfather, um, over how many years ago? Trend that we as in, as I went, I was in the hotel where I picked up, ah, Psalm 94. Ah, oh God, to whom vengeance belong it. To whom vengeance belong it, show thyself. And I use another translation. I said, what? So this is in another translation like this. I rather use that other translation and emphasize it in prayer. That same day, man, I saw the thing happen one hand. What? Are you not something? Because we have come a long way. We have come a long way. Where we mean hopelessly useless, hopeless. Ah. Hopelessly difficult situation. We have seen them. Where well, you say, are you sure this will put you? Somebody was talking once and he said, let somebody know faith, faith and die and die in faith and nothing happened. I almost because he was an elderly person and because I'm a polite teacher, you know, um, when I'm teaching people, I'm polite. I get what I'm saying. But man, if that would be me like this, I tell you, shut up. Have you seen challenges? If you see some, you almost you would know that man, God delivers. Are we together? Yeah. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. And then the word despair is a common term, um, which is exapoereomia. That's the Greek word. And um, it means out of, not. Are we together? So, and um, it means to travel a road. So putting it together, Paul had lost his will to keep on traveling the road of life. So he was, when he says despair, it means I want, to, I want to get out of this journey <laughs> of life. I'm I want to get out of this road, this road of life I want to get out. That's what Paul got to. That's where he got to. They, we're talking about Paul here. What has Paul not seen? But he's saying Paul got to a point where he wanted to get out of the journey of life. And why? Persecution. Persecution. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, this was the nature of persecution that is the pressure that Paul bore. This tells us the gravity of things he had to suffer for the gospel of Christ and with Christ. The gravity of things he had to suffer to the, to the, to the point that he said, I want to come out of this road called life. Let me go to another road. <laughs> You see, we don't understand those words. For me to live is Christ and for me to die is gain. We don't understand. In other words, I have got to a point where I want to walk out of this road of life. So if I did not walk out of the road of life, if God did not allow me to come out of the road of life, so what am I living for? It's Christ. And if I have to die, hey, that is better for me, self. And then he, at the point he told them, he said, I'm contemplating between living and stay. The guy got to a point that this life did not make sense. He said, I'm not in this life. I'm just living for Christ. I'm going to bring it between living and stay. So somebody's not thinking of, okay, can I die now? Can I not die? Okay, let me die now. Let me not die now. Uh, not as a case of, you know, suicide. You get what I'm saying? But because he had come to a point where the only essence of life was, is Christ. Say, I'm, 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 in, I'm, I'm in between living and staying. He said, but you know, if I stay, it will be better for you. So I'm staying. So it's not if I stay, I will enjoy more things in life. I will catch more fun. I will go on more vacation. No, if I stay, it will be better for your, your salvation. So I stay. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Now, Elijah also got to the point of despair for life. But, you know, 
it was at this point that God sent an angel to him and gave him food to, to eat that lasted him for 40 days and nights. In the strength of the food, he walked to Horeb, where God spoke to him. 1 Kings 19, verse 4 to 9. Amen to Jesus. Um, it says, and he, and he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. You see it also? Want to walk out of this journey of life. And said, it is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. He was talking about that an angel was giving food to eat. <laughs> I want to die. God said, Chop, so you eat, so you have life. <laughs> Ironical God. All right. And he, he, and he looked, and behold, there was a cake on the coast and a, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. And the angel came again the second time, and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he has eaten now, but then they said, No, you have to eat more. You have to get um, um, satisfied, over full, over full. Eat till you over full. This is not where you eat small, small. Eat very well. It says, And he rose. And did eat and drink, and went on went in the strength of that meal forty days and forty nights, unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? When Elijah came to the point of despair, God did not God did not talk. God gave him food. Now. It makes us understand something, that when we come to the point of despair, God only gives us food. And what is that food? His word. Are you getting what I'm saying? In the strength of his word, we can go to hear him more. Because we need his word to give us strength so we can hear the word for that moment. Because if we go for that, we discover that that's when God began to tell him, all right, um, I have over 7,000 men that have not bowed their head to bow. Okay, go and, go and anoint Jehu, go and anoint Elisha. You know what I'm saying? Now, he needed an assignment word, a word for his assignment. But for you to get the word for your assignment, when you are under persecution, when you are under the weight and, uh, uh, and you, uh, the weight of persecution that has gone above strength that has become hyper dynamis. Are you get what I'm saying? When you are at that point in time and you feel like walking out of life, that is you are despaired, what God does to you is to give you a word that will give you strength at that moment. Are you get what I'm saying? Because the reason why you are despairing is because there is a destiny word waiting you. The destiny word took 40 days for him to get. Are you get what I'm saying? But he needed to walk, he needed to, to, to survive, he needed to be alive, he needed to walk from his point where he was of despair to the point of where is the point of destiny world. Are you get what I'm saying? So whenever we are on that, whenever we are, whenever we are highly persecuted, this is not me very well. That's not the time to, to whine and cry and have self-pity. Are you get what I'm saying? That's what the devil wants you to do. That's what the devil has the devil wants to feel. He wants to feel that you are all messed up. He wants to feel that God doesn't love you any longer. He wants to make you feel that, oh, no, oh, no, oh, oh, many, 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 many wrong things run through your mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? But let me tell you something. When you get to that point of despair, which some of us we get to, when you get to that point of despair, that is the time to eat. That is, the, And you may not feel hungry because Elijah did not feel hungry. He felt like that. When you are in despair, you feel like dying. You don't feel like eating. Elijah felt like dying. But God said, no, it's not time to die. It's time to eat. When you are in despair, it's not the time to die. It's the time to eat. Eat God's word. Eat God's word. If you cannot open your Bible and, and, and read, come on. Take teachings that will lift up your spirit, man. Listen to teachings that will lift up your spirit, man. Run your Bible, your Bible in your phone. Run it. Let it run through. Take Psalms. Me, when I get to that point, when I'm really weak, I just take the book of Psalms and I begin to read. Why? Because David was a man who knew how to eat when he was in despair. In 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 in, in, in first about 30. We remember the story in Ziklag. Oh, they said, let us stone him to death. 
yet. But at that point, what did David? The Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. We see David said, Why art thou cast down on my soul? He knew how to talk to himself. He says, Hope in the Lord. And again, I will rejoice. Why? Because he was a man that knew how to eat. He knew how to eat. He knew how to eat. When you come to the point of despair, it's not a time to sleep. It's not a time because Elijah was sleeping. Despair wants you to sleep. That's why some people, when they get into depression, they start sleeping unnecessarily. And they start eating unnecessarily physical food. And they start closing all their windows and blah, blah, blah. And they start getting fat and everything is messed up. No. It's when you get to the time of despair. It's not the time to sleep. It's not the time to die. It's the time to eat. It's the word. Because you need that word to take you for a period of time yes. to your destiny world. Yes, yes because the reason for that, for that that persecution is because there's a destiny word ahead. And you need the word for the now that can carry you to the point where you get to the destiny world. Sir. So let the persecution come. But when it comes, it gets you hyperdynamics, no problem. But you know what? When you get to the point of despair, no problem still. What do you do? Eat. The angel had to give Elijah food. The food had already been given out to us. The word of God has given up to us. It's everywhere. It's on your phone. It's in your hard copy Bible. It's in soft copy. It's in hard copy. It's in hard copy. It's on the internet. Eat. 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 And if you eat the first time and sleep, you are not yet full. Eat again. How do you know you are not full? When you still see, feel despair after eating. You have rest kitchen and still feeling despair. You have no, you are, the angel told him, stand up again and eat, sir. You are not full enough for the journey. Eat again. When you've eaten the first time and you still feel despair after eating, go and eat again. Eat until that stoop, that despair thought leaves your mind. Eat until that, that weight leaves your mind. Just keep eating, eating and eating. I know the more you eat, the more you are moving. Day one, you eat. Day two, before you know, you'll be at day 40 and you're already at your destiny world. I don't know what I'm talking to here, but I tell you, my brother, my sister, it's time to eat. Eat. Arise and eat. The persecution is good for you, but arise and eat. Hmm. Paul did not only despair in life, he prayed thrice for the, uh, for the tone to be taken away from his flesh, and God told him, my grace is sufficient for you. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7 to 9. It says, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that were given to me, a tone in, in, the, in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, uh, um, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to perfect me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weaknesses. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Brother, eat. Sister, eat. You are in despair, eat. If you eat and you still feel despair, eat again. The food is never too much. I found thy word and I did eat them. And they were joy and rejoicing to my soul. Until it becomes a joy and rejoicing to your soul, don't stop eating. Eat and eat and eat and eat until joy springs out. Until joy explodes. When the joy bursts out, my brother, you are about to get into your destiny world. It may take 40 days to journey, but it's better we eat and rock 40 days than we die and not get to destiny world. I'm ending right now. Thus far, we have seen all the pains, illnesses, injuries, losses, damages, and unpleasant experiences Paul had for the gospel of Christ Jesus and, with, uh, and, and suffering with Christ Jesus. Despite all of this, he was not defeated. And he never became worse because he was not badly affected by them. Oh, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 8 and 9 says, We were troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despair. <laughs> Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. My brother, eat. <laughs> eat. Paul suffered all this for the sake of the gospel, but the grace of God was sufficient for him to finish his assignment. Thus, he manifested as a heir of God and joined her with Christ. And he got his eternal reward. Same grace of God 
is sufficient for every hair of God and joint hair with Christ. My brothers, my sisters, eat. Just go ahead and pray in the language of the Spirit. Candonzi bratens um brinkete brocontosa, Zepre ketele begedush, Bracatala bacoti libedish ke bedelo bodusha, Zebre gedolo bodusha, Bratosa had alabasha, Inda do sibre etele bocondo lobodosha, Zembrin telegadesha, Imbratons gi perenga di scombo rocoto lobocotosha, Rembre gedele becetumbra atalabusha, E imbro onti la gadeshe brete. Ende 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 endu inge tembre etendota imbra tandari akaratata andropolo kotosa lebregedele bebedush lebregedele bedush brakata la baswata in the name of the Lord Jesus we are going to be praying this prayer you know in 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 in, in one of the uh, morning prayer sessions so please join in but as we are praying the Lord drop this word in my spirit for somebody be not afraid nor be dismayed. For the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them to no more and forever. I don't know what that person who has that word, but that word is for you. And the Lord said, I should tell you, eat that word. Eat Ayana Makoteleba, Detosha, Ateleba. Remember what the Lord told me, Adonai shall do battle. Adonai shall do battle for you. Just calm yourself down. I have seen it in Exodus 14, verse 14 in King James. The Lord shall fight for you. Just hold your peace. I know to hold your peace there, the word peace there in the Hebrew, one of his one, one word that's praying to be silent. But when I saw it in o, uh, CJP, uh, OJP, Adonai. I will do battle for you. Just calm yourself down. I don't know who is there, but eat this word. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat this word. The Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more forever. Shatu para. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we receive grace to eat and keep eating and keep eating. This persecutions as they come, we receive grace to eat your word and to keep eating your word till we get to what our destiny world. Thank you, Lord and King. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Glory to God forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. We're praying for the sick. We decree healings in every sick body. Amen. And we decree liberation for every soul. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You have not made just a lot of personal sin, but just say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus. I come to you today, I believe with my heart and confess with my mouth that I am my Lord and personal Savior, that you died and resurrected for me. Thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for receiving these ones in your beloved and giving them the grace to serve and follow you all the days of your life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your time. God bless you. See you tomorrow morning and tomorrow evening. Grace. For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number 033-154-551-2013. Swift code M B G H G H A C to give in CDs. Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. You can send to account number 033-254-551-2017 To give in Naira, you can send to Ecobank Nigeria, account number 554-102-0592 Also, for further enquiries, you can call us on plus 233-54594-7132 OR, send us an email via ministry at gmail.com Today, remain ever blessed. We believe you were blessed listening to this teaching from God's Word. May your soul remain ever refreshed and revived. We would love to hear your praise report today. Beloved, remain connected to Grace Life Comey Podcast. Jesus is Lord.